Flashback. I know you guys are objective over there that you just report the news as it is. <laughs> oh, I know. CNN makes it. Is that this, supposed to be a laugh line? I wasn't supposed to be, <laughs> but uh, I guess it is. Well, they just saw like 90 minutes of this guy saying things, people loving him, and then five people who look like elitists because they oh, you don't get it. You see? You don't get what we, we like about him. What's going on, guys? So we got to talk about this now woke paid leftist Caitlin Collins, okay? Because she is absolutely a paid tool for the radical left. She's pretending. So there's footage out there of her saying exactly how this goes. And then fast forward a little while later, and all of a sudden, she's a far leftist working for CNN. The press is throwing a royal tantrum because they can't control what the country is talking about. For the last eight years, they've all decided what the question should be, and they've all gone in there and asked the same question. And now that they're not being called on, they can't control what the news is about, and it's driving them crazy. So the president has attacked the press intensely, like no other president has ever gone after the press like this. What does that do to the reporters covering the briefing every day? People are a little hysterical about his criticism. Yes, he hates the press. Yes, he's very vocal about it. But what president has not hated the press? We make right. their lives harder, and they all hate us. They may not all talk about it, but they definitely hate yes, us. Yes, they do. So, but people are taking it really personally, and you shouldn't take the president's criticism personally. It shouldn't affect your reporting, but you can tell when you read the New York Times and CNN that it does affect their reporting, and that's not what should happen. I don't take my cues from the, rep the, the president. I report on him. I don't report to him. So you think that there's there's a personal element to this? They don't like Definitely. him because he criticizes. Because he calls them out them. by their names, and they don't like that, and then they get a lot of heat on Twitter, and then it makes them resent him not for his policies and not for not following through on his campaign promises, but for who he is as a person. And that's not your job. Your job is not to get your feelings hurt. No, that's exactly, that's exactly right. So as you saw at the beginning, Steve Colbert's audience was literally laughing at the prospect of CNN being somehow non-biased and neutral, which obviously Caitlin Collins rebutes because she works for the network. So she's not gonna concede like, yeah, absolutely we're biased. I mean, literally both, CNN and MSNBC both claim the same thing. They claim that they're doing fair and accurate, unbiased reporting, which is just astounding. And Caitlin Collins continues that trend today, but Bill Maher calls her out about that along with a lot of stuff. Without further ado, let's get into it. You know, if you think not putting Trump on TV is going to make Trump- No, 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 that's not what not I'm true. saying. What I'm saying is I watched that, and that you did do a good job. You held his feet to the fire, but the crowd loved him. Every, it didn't matter that he was spewing bullshit. He always spews bullshit. They loved but him. But that's, that's cut, representative of America. Okay, Republicans well, do love him, and they may, right. he may very well be But then they president. cut to the panel where it's like five people shitting on him. So they <laughs> just saw like 90 minutes of this guy saying things, people loving him, and then five people who look like elitists because they're, oh, you don't get it. You see, you don't get what we, we like about him. Well, I think two things can be true. I think people can like Donald Trump and maybe not care about the veracity of his statements or, or what he promises to do and whether or not he fulfills that or changes his position on it. And I think you can have people, you know, talk about that and analyze it after. I don't think that those two things can exist together. Made press because you were on Stephen Colbert's show and he said something like, um, you guys at CNN just report the news straight <laughs> and the crowd burst into laughter. <laughs> Look, I'm on CNN now. I guess we're on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they show this show the next night. I don't know yeah. how they. I don't know how we get away with it with all the fucks, but they do, yeah. uh, <laughs> and all these dirty jokes. Uh, but I'm glad, and I, and I'm a big rooter for CNN. But that tells you a lot, doesn't it? I mean, how do, how do you guys think you are doing is in that arena of like, this is a terribly divided country. We're not only politicized. A lot of people just hate the other side, and CNN, in my view should be the place where both sides can watch. How do you think you're doing with it? How is CN CNN is the place where both sides can watch. And I, and I <laughs> what? What did he say? Oh. I think, you know, <laughs> my show is a Yo, chick, slap yourself. Fool, slap yourself three times. Yo, oh. right they pretty much got like one neutral person, Scott Jennings, which Bill's gonna get to himself here. But to try to say that they're a neutral place, they literally just spew Trump hate all day, every day with rare criticism. They give like occasional criticisms when it's too late, when it's just so blatant, so obvious. These people withheld Joe Biden's cognitive decline and they saw Joe Biden on a regular basis. Like the average person doesn't have access to Joe. 
these people did. They lied about it, and then go sit up here and try to pretend like they're neutral. Caitlin Collins, you're lying your ass off. Evidence of that. We have lawmakers on from both parties. We'll have Elizabeth Warren on one, one night. We'll have Ted Cruz on uh, another night. I think lawmakers from... Yes, and you'll try to throw these softballs at the Democrats, and you'll hold the Republicans' feet to the fire like nobody's business. He said... There are good people on both sides. There were not good people on both sides. Speaking and acting with moral clarity, something that Donald Trump is bankrupt on. He has no moral clarity, and he has absolutely no business opining on this issue, given his track record. Governor Josh Shapiro, thank you for your time. Thank you, Caitlin. Aaron. All right, Caitlin, thank you very much. And now let's... Sure, not quite as bad as MSDNC, but still horrendous. Both parties yeah, should take questions and you should push both of them. But but on the on CNN being a place of credibility, I mean, look at what just happened in Chicago. We had 300 people from CNN on the ground covering that convention. There were f several reporters from just our team alone on the floor uh, bringing it in real time to people. And I think CNN puts resources behind things and just brings a level of news that you don't get anywhere else. And you shouldn't take the president's criticism personally. It shouldn't affect your reporting. But you can tell when you read the New York Times and CNN that it does affect their reporting. And, and I think CNN does yeah, a great job. I'm, I'm talking about the people on CNN. And what I, I know what the conservative side of America thinks, and I don't blame them. I watched Kamala's speech last night. It ended at 8.09, well, I guess 11.09 in the East. It wasn't until 11.23, till the, conserv the one conservative guy, what's his name? Scott Jennings. This lonely Scott, I call him. David Urban was there, too. <laughs> wait a second, wait a second. I watched, from 8.09 to 8.23, they were just gushing about how great a speech it was. And I think she did fine. I didn't think it was as good as they were making it out to be. But if I'm a conservative in America, and I'm watching CNN, just for the straight middle of the road, that's what I hear for 15 minutes is it's great. And then Lonely Scott. <laughs> <laughs> it does look, I mean, and, when and Scott Jennings, he has a habit of shutting these freaking woke behind CNN anchors down. As a matter of fact, he leaves them speechless all the time. It's like they don't even know what to say. Tonight said anything. <laughs> Nobody tonight said a damn thing. They want you to vote for a ticket based on absolutely no concrete idea about what they would do once they get in office. You said he got more progressive when he got elected governor. So you're saying every time he gets another office, he gets more and more progressive. I think that's exactly what would happen. Tonight, you did hear people say, well, we may not agree with them on everything, but at least it'll be joyful as yeah. they tax us into oblivion. You see the path. It does look like tokenism. It's kind of like the same as the view. It's like it's almost better to have nobody there like MSNBC, then they have this book. <laughs> well, I don't think you can, I don't think you can say, I don't think you can say it's better to have nobody there and then also lament the fact that you don't think the conservative guy, Scott Jennings, who is great, and, and we have him on my show all the time, spoke up early enough. I, I think it was a Democratic convention. They well, turned to Democrats, people like David Axelrod, who ran successful presidential Democratic campaigns first for, for their analysis of this. And I don't think that you can say that, that CNN is anything but fair. I mean, look at that. We covered President Biden's exit from the race very closely, the pressure on him to get out. They waited until after that disastrous Trump debate where Donald Trump literally ended Biden's career. Then they started reporting it because they knew we, we can't get out of this. But they weren't reporting on Joe Biden's cognitive decline before that. They treated it as if it was some sort of conspiracy theory. They went along with Kareem Jean-Pierre saying it was a cheap fake. Kayla Collins is sitting up here lying to your faces again. And I feel like I can speak with authority on this. I'm from Alabama. I'm from a very red state. I have a very conservative family. A lot of them who are Trump voters, they watch my show every night. And, and I think they know that they can, they can trust me, that you know, we call bullshit on every side, not just whatever leaning our, our audience may be. And this cup, this cup, this this cup. Cup. And, and I think that's something that people actually want more of, is to hear from that. I think Scott's voice is really important, but I think other voices are important to hear from. And everyone who, who was speaking last night, it's not like they were all Democrats. I mean, we had Dana Bash, Jake Tapper, Abby Phillip, all my amazing colleagues. They come across giving that way. analysis. They come across that way. Is, it, is she trying to say that 
Abby Phillip, Jake Tapper, and Dana Bash are not are they are they supposed to be independent? <laughs> hey yo, what the fuck? <laughs> this can't be serious. She just said Abby Phillip. The first video on this channel, Abby Phillip. Now, in fairness to the argument, Abby Phillip was actually fair in that conversation. But most of them, she's not. If y'all heard her conversation with Vivek Ramaswamy, this lady is a Democrat shill. Dana Bash, this lady hates Trumps. Dana Bash and Jake Tapper, I was very impressed by that debate because they hate Donald Trump. The fact that she would even bring them up demonstrates that she's totally tone deaf. This lady has no sense. In a moment like that, it was like five to one. It always looks like five to one. Okay, I'll move on. What do you think about the fact that Kamala doesn't talk to the press? It, in a way, I feel like it's more insulting to help than what Trump does. Now, Trump says you're the enemy of the people, which is pretty bad. But she's kind of saying is, I don't need you. I'm not, a, I'm not talking to you. You don't matter. You're not relevant anymore. To me, that's even worse than I hate you. It's like, I don't think about you. I don't know if it's worse than denigrating the press on a daily basis, which is what Donald Trump did. Well, the reason why Kamala is obviously not going to say she hates the press is because majority of them are on her side. But to make sure that things can't kind of, the, the tie can't turn a little bit, she's literally hiding from the press. Donald Trump has balls. Kamala is a weak and feeble person. There's plenty of other women who will strongly stand in front of the press. Kamala Harris is not one of them. I mean, I was, I covered him in the White House every day as a, as a correspondent. And, you know, oftentimes to, to kind of, you know, shake you if you were asking him a question, he would try to get into a personal argument with you or just deny or, or lie about, you know, what you were asking about. And so I don't, I don't know if I would compare the two. I do think she should talk to the press. I think anyone who wants to have access to the nuclear codes should be willing to sit down and take questions. And, and we want to have her on the show. I'd love to, too. But I'm not going <laughs> to hold my breath. Even with that last comment, Caitlin Collins wasn't really particularly critical of Kamala Harris. Like, it has been like a month. It's been like over a month. And Kamala Harris hasn't done no interviews, no press conferences. Donald Trump literally is doing phone calls and interviews and press conferences literally every single day. You can't go a day without seeing Trump somewhere, hearing his voice, something new every single day. Kamala Harris trying to bring it on home. She's trying to get her a home run and hit home base off of vibes and joy alone. Trump derangement to the finish. There's nothing else going on here. She mentioned policy positions. She got ate up for that. And then she stopped. So she, they probably tested the waters to see, well, maybe I mentioned one thing, maybe a little price control, maybe a little communism here and there. And then she got ate up. Shout out to Pac-Man. And then she was like, whoa, 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 let me go hide back under my bed because this ain't really working out how I hoped it would. So I'm going to just stay under here and vote for me. That's what Kamala said foolishly. Kaylin Collins here seems like she's living under a rock herself because she doesn't really seem to understand the writing on the wall here, regardless of your family from Alabama and all of that stuff. Clearly, you're not listening to what people are saying because you got literally like one guy, Scott Jennings, going up against everybody all the time. And you're trying to say that this is fair and balanced. Like you mentioned Jake Tapper and Dana Bash. Donald Trump hates them because they hate him. And you're trying to act like they're independent. This lady is bonkers, nuts. Like she's lost her mind. CNN has turned her brain to soup. You got to be careful who you hang around, guys. You hang around a lot of these woke weirdos long enough, you end up becoming just like them. I think that's what happened with Caitlin Collins. And it's sad that even a far leftist like Bill Maher recognizes it. Who knew? Bill Maher has sense sometimes. Trump deranged as hell, but he got good sense, common sense. A lot of the time, he doesn't do research for, for anything. He don't, he don't research nothing that he'd be talking about unless it's like based on religion, which he hates. But as it relates to politics, he don't research that, but he does understand common sense. And he sees the writing on a wall. And admittedly, I have a little bit more respect for him because he's willing to call out the very obvious. Maybe if Caitlin Collins wasn't working for CNN any, anymore, then she would 
agree with him, but for the time being, she's going to continue being a little leftist propaganda in a puppet for the DNC. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I appreciate y'all watching the Black Anomaly. Rising channel. I'm out. And you shouldn't take the president's criticism personally. It shouldn't affect your reporting. But you can tell when you read the New York Times and CNN that it does affect their reporting.